everyone, and welcome back to another wonderful episode of the Why We Disney podcast. Happy Wednesday. We are so excited because we're so overdue for some very, very special people to join us here on the podcast. I think that you guys are not only going to love our special guests, but you're also going to love something a little surprising that we have planned at the end of the episode. So stay tuned. If you kind of want to skip to the end, check the episode chapters in our description, new that we have here on the podcast. And go ahead and skip to that, but you want to see our friends. So stay tuned for the rest of the episode. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Why We Disney podcast. My name is Casey, and as always, I'm joined with my co-host, Kara. Hey, guys. (laughs) Guys, we are, like Kara said, long overdue to introduce some really important people to you. Listen, Kara and I have been at this for a while, right? You guys know us. You know Why We Disney. You know How We Disney. So today, we're going to bring you a brand new perspective and brand new faces on the team. So I want to give a huge warm welcome to Haley and Laurel. How are you guys? (laughs) Doing great. Good. So I want to talk a little bit about like what you guys do for the podcast. But first, I just want to appreciate all that you do for us. There is obviously so many moving parts behind just two faces in front of a camera once a week like it's so many more moving parts so I want to start with Haley if that's okay with you let's go ahead and roll into this so where first of all where can everybody find you on Instagram right because we all have our personal Instagrams my Instagram is teach.lift.disney and how I came up with that name is I'm a former second grade teacher turned homeschool mom And so that's where the teach part comes. And I am obsessed with health and fitness and weightlifting. And it just kind of like, it's my, where I channel, you know, when I'm feeling bad or anything, that's my me time. So that's where lifting. So if you need any kind of tips about that. And then of course, Disney, our family visits Disney often, you know, that's why we're all here because we love Disney. So that's, that's where my handle comes from. I know it's a little different, but I wanted to hit every, um, you know, point that covers me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and I love that. So out of all of us, you are the only one who is a legitimate parent. Okay, I consider myself a parent, but a dog parent, right? Like not a not actual parent. So how old are your kids? And what are their ages? So I have four kids. I have three boys and a girl. My oldest will be 12 on October 1st, which we all know is a special day anyway. Yes. Uh, (laughs) And then I have a nine year old, a 10 year old and a six year old. That's awesome. Jeez Louise. Well, tell us a little bit about what you do for the Why We Disney podcast. What is your piece in all of this? So I am sort of the face behind the Instagram page. I work with another member on pushing out content, um, replying to comments, Mm -hmm. uh, just making sure that our Instagram page is fresh and um, has great content, posting stories, you know, sometimes if someone's replying to you, it's probably me. Yeah. I just love that because some people don't realize they're like, oh, it's just Karen and Casey talking for an hour. That is so not the case. Um, literally our team is running the whole background of this podcast. I don't know how Haley does it. Like she's pushing out again, content, stories, posts, replies, hashtags, analytics, everything. So it's, it's super appreciated. As you guys all know, we all have our own Instagrams and that's a lot in and of itself. So it's great that we can just have these members of the team that are just like taking little aspects of it. And it's a team effort, you know, I mean, it takes us all. So it truly does. You said it, it takes us all. So um, obviously everyone knows why Kara and I, Disney, we ask every special guest that we have on the podcast this, but why do you Disney? Why is it so important to you? What is it about Disney that makes you so passionate? I, the first time I went to Disney was when I was six and my grandfather was like, they were there. He took my mom and uh, her brother when, you know, back in the seventies, when Disney first opened, they stayed at the contemporary, they did um, the Lou Alpha Polynesian, like the OG Disney, you know, which is what we all love. And he had such a love for it that he instilled it in me. And so from the time I went as a young child, you know, I evolved from a child that loves Disney to an adult that loves Disney. And we all know we adults, we're a different breed of people. We know this. And now, you know, my husband, he had never been to Disney until he met me. So our first trip that we went on, honestly, was a disaster. 
It was. And he said, I'm never going back again. Our kids, we had three kids at that time. Um, and he was like, this was awful. We overplanned. We were there like 10 days. We just did too much. And I was like, no. let's just rethink this. And we went back six months later. And that was the trip for him that kind of was like, okay, I, I love it too. And ever since then, we've been going all the time. Well, and you know, we, we live in Kentucky, so it's, it's not like we can just hop in our car and drive, but um, yeah. So for me, it started as a young, a young kid that's now evolved to an adult. And my, my 12 year old or almost 12 year old told me the other day, he said, mom, we really go to Disney for you. You know that, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, we love it too, but we, we love it for you. They probably love how it makes you feel like, you know, a happy mama is a happy household, right? Like, yeah. let's be real. I love it. I love it so much. I love why you Disney. Everyone has a story and everybody's story is so important. And literally it's in your blood. Like it, you inherited that love. So I think that's really, really cool. All right. Well, we're going to flip over and do Laurel now. So Kara, you want to go ahead and flip into Laurel stuff? Absolutely. Um, what another amazing member of our team. And I'm just so excited for her to kind of tell her story. So Laurel, can you start with uh, where would they can all find you on the gram and above? Absolutely. So um, my name is Laurel, but I also run a blog. It's curls, pearls and pixie dust.com. Um, that's it. It's just curls, pearls and pixie dust.com. There is an and in there and they can find me on Instagram at the same place. Curls, pearls and pixie dust. Um, that kind of comes from everything that I cover and the things I'm really passionate about that. I'm a curly hair girl um, and I do a little bit of lifestyle blogging pearls. I'm, I'm from the South. I'm a Southern girl. I love love being outside and pearls and Lily Pulitzer and pink um, and baking. That's me. And then pixie dust is the Disney side of things, um, which encompasses all of that. Right. If you can dream it, you can do it. And that counts for, you know, how you style, how you bake, how you live your life. And so I think having magic at the parks and at home is a huge part of a happy life. All right. Awesome. Thank you all so much for saying that. And um, just so the listeners know and our watchers galore, what exactly do you do for the Why We Disney podcast behind the scenes? So I'm able to collaborate with the other members of the team, as well as some of our small shop brands that collaborate with us or content creators that collaborate with us and help with giveaways and the newsletter that goes out to those of you who have subscribed. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure that you check us out and subscribe to our newsletter. So, you know, all the why we Disney news that's coming up and all the podcast episodes that will be airing as well as the latest Disney news. And then I also help with a few things like the giveaways and the takeover Tuesdays, which should be coming up and a few of the other um, content creation moments of that public relations side of the podcast. Yeah. And it's not just us y'all. It is this whole team. So please make sure to go and find Haley and Laurel on Instagram and give them a follow, support them as long as well as you're supporting the podcast um, because it's a whole team effort. Um, But can you kind of tell the listeners your story like Haley did? Why? you Disney did you grow up and did you come into it um people think like we're shot up with like Spider-Man Venom and then we like <laughs> drop pixie dust everywhere <laughs> that's what like Disney adults are but tell us your reasoning as to why you Disney sure I think that it's so interesting how many different people have a different story but for us we actually lived in Orlando um my little sister was born there so we lived there for a little while and Disney was a huge part of our lives um as well as the whole Orlando theme park um, life. People who live near Orlando will understand that. But when we, even when we moved away, um, Disney movies and Disney um, celebrations and decorating Disney that used to come on TV. I remember growing up with that. Um, in addition to some other things in my life that have shaped a lot of my beliefs, Disney shaped a lot of my growing up. Like I think it did for many people. We learned that love is the greatest power and that good triumphs over evil. And it's okay for things to not work out the way you thought they would. And I think learning that from those classic Disney characters um, is really what drew me to Disney and has developed my love for it in and outside of the parks. So growing up, you know, we moved away from Orlando and it was maybe 10 plus years until I returned and went back to Disney. And so, so much had changed. Um, And as a Disney adult returning to the parks, I just found that magic in a new way. It was no longer just the growing up morals, but now it was all those things I had learned in my life that I got to enjoy with my friends and my family um, and the magic of 
I guess you could say why Disney is Disney is where everybody gets to have a dream. Everybody gets to have a hope. It doesn't matter where you're from or what that is. Everybody's valued and everybody gets to say, hey, this is my dream. I'm going to go for this. And the magic of Disney is then do it. Then, then go for it. And, and we'll be there and push you and support you. I love that. Could that could there be like a better answer to describe, first of all, all of us on this team, but also the Disney community as a whole, like you have a dream, then chase it, then do it. Like this is a place where we're all accepted and we're all welcome. I just, uh, yeah. I need you to stop because like, that's the, that's the script for happily ever after. Yeah. Take hold of your dreams and watch them come true. Like it, it was the moment back in 2019 where I was just like, yes, Disney, I love you. <laughs> well, this is why I'm so upset about happily ever after ending. And I know why, but I'm like, please don't retire it because it's so true. Like what are all the different kinds of happy endings that you, what's your happy ending that you want? You know, mm-hmm. you, you're the key to making that happen. And I, there's no feeling like walking down Main Street USA, like there's no hope greater than in Disney I feel like if you're a Disney person and your Disney hopes and dreams like walking down Main Street and looking at the castle it's like I could do anything right now I am in control I could do this and I think that's such an empowering feeling for a lot of people Hmm. and I love it too because just like any other niche right we're all talking like Disney adults um and some people are like Disney adults are so weird okay monster truck drivers are weird I can say anything else about any other niche right um and I don't think that we actually love monster trucks but like <laughs> it's just something that brings us together uh, even though we're all separate people it's just this community that we've built and I do want to stress we're not all the same right we're not all carbon copy we love Mickey Mouse like we're, we're not walking around like robots um we have a differencing of opinions which is how I want to kind of transition into this next segment and we're going to be talking about uh some of my favorite things which is some hot takes I love bringing up the drama in Disney right <laughs> there needs to be a whole separate park I will run it I will be its evil queen the dark side of Disney I'm, I'm just saying it, it needs to happen anyway yeah. Um, we're going to talk about some unpopular opinions. As we all know, Disney is not the same for everyone. We didn't all come out the womb saying Mickey Mouse. We didn't all, you know, grow up talking about Disney in, in some way, shape or form. And we all have different ideas on what the park should be or what food should be like. Um, I don't know. So many different things, right? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Let's get into some unpopular opinions. <laughs> Welcome to our new segment. Casey, do you want to start us off? I would love to start us off. And I want to tell you why. It's because I actually hide from this. I do not like giving my hot takes, nor do I like giving unpopular opinions because I'm always like, no, it's great. And it's not like the, my favorite thing, but like, it's still good. Like, I'm like, it's, it's ingrained in my head to try to be positive about everything all the time, but I'm going to let loose here, guys. Okay. I'm going to give my true unpopular opinion. Okay. I do not like the pineapple Dole Whip. I think it's gross. That's my first one. And the second one is the Tiki Room in Magic Kingdom is the worst thing. It's, it's just the worst thing. Like, I absolutely hate it. I'll never do it. It's I'll never so do it again. Bad. Like it's, it's one of two attractions that is Walt Disney. It has Walt Disney. There's only one other attraction. Do y'all know what it is? Carousel of Progress. Yeah. There's only two attractions that have Walt Disney's. I just feel like it's classic. I can't. Am I the only one that thinks it's classic? What, what do y'all think? Tell me about the Tiki Room. In the tiki 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 room. <laughs> yeah, the birds are singing the and the birds sing birds and the flowers bloom in the tiki 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 room. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, the tiki. Yeah, no, I'm not a fan. That's my hot take. That's my unpopular opinion. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you're on YouTube, I'd love to know. We need to backtrack your dole whip. Yeah. How do you guys, Laurel, Haley, how do you guys feel about the pineapple Dole Whip? I mean, I usually get one every time we go, honestly, because I feel like it's like, you know, a rite of passage. Oh, you're at Disney. You need to get a Dole Whip at Aloha Isle, you know. Yeah. Or pineapple Lay Leilani. You need to get one, you know. <laughs> I don't hate Dole Whip, but I am not, I'm a sugar person. Like, I want sweet, 
sweet things and people that know me and know I'm a baker know that I'm like dessert all the time. And so the pineapple Dole Whip is not my favorite. Believe it or not, like the coconut Dole Whip is actually really good. It's like, I like a the yes. And so I prefer stuff like that. Thanks. But if I'm going to eat a snack, I'm probably going to eat like a Mickey bar or I'm going to go get like a specialty dessert somewhere. I'm like a cake and cookies person. Ice cream to me is like barely a dessert. So that's, that's my thing with Dole Whip, but that's probably unpopular in itself. <laughs> I am really glad, Haley, that you mentioned the swirl, though, because I can do the swirl, the vanilla and pineapple. pineapple. It's still not the greatest thing, but, like, I can eat it all, and I walk away, like, satisfied. That's what I usually get the swirl. I don't, I, I should probably back up. I don't ever just get the pineapple. I always get the swirl. Mm -hmm. You do the float or just oh, the, the, ice, the ice cream, the soft serve. Yeah, the soft serve. Yeah, Kara, what do you think? Kara, uh, I get the pineapple swirl float. float. Um, and I like getting the float, honestly, because it's the best of both. You can get a drink and a snack. All in one. <laughs> All, All in one. one. <laughs> it's efficient. It's easy. It's classic. Yes. It's um, not for Casey. Yeah, not for Casey. That's all right, all right girl. Okay. All right, who's next? Oh, let's do Laurel. <gasps> me okay everybody don't freak out I guess since Casey did too I have one and then like a sub one <laughs> so I guess maybe it's not unpopular I guess people can let us know I could go to Disney and not ride a single thing not a single attraction and have an amazing day nope like I I would be okay going to Disney and not riding anything I agree with you just being there is enough for me like taking in the sounds the smells, the atmosphere, people watching, that that's enough for me. At Magic Kingdom, it is. Just a good day, like, with a great coffee or a great, like, fruity drink and hanging out and walking around and looking at all the things there are to look at at Disney. Like, there's so many things just to look at, not even attractions. But anyway, so that's my unpopular opinion. You don't need to ride stuff to enjoy Disney. But I guess my really thing unpo that's unpopular is like, I hate Space Mountain. I hate, hate, hate Space Mountain. And if, it's because every time I ride, I ride like this with my hands over my head because I feel like I'm going to be decapitated going around some of those. <laughs> and it, it, I don't know if it's because it's in the dark, but I'm legitimately terrified of it. I'm terrified of Space Mountain. And I, I hate it. That's the only ride that I'm like, no, I will never, ever, ever again. So and can I just say, not only does Laurel hate Space Mountain, but Space Mountain actually hates Laurel. Like, it does hate me. Every time I go on Space Mountain, I have a traumatic experience. Like one time, time I went on Space Mountain and I lost my Costa sunglasses. And we don't know where they went. They might have disappeared. They might have been left in the pocket. I think that Space Mountain ate them because it couldn't keep me. Like I the glasses are gone and then another time I got on Space Mountain and I didn't know if I was going to be able to get off I was like stuck in the little harness it was terrible so Space Mountain hates me I hate Space Mountain it's a mutual hate hate relationship but I will love it because it's in Disney and never ride it again so there's my unpopular opinion it, ride Space Mountain at your own risk <laughs> Kara could you go to Disney and not ride a single thing I could for like two days. I, no. I could, my answer is I can, but I don't only want to do that. Like if I had to, if, if the, the Disney gods came down and said no rides for forever or, you know, one ride a day, at least I need my fix at least. Um, yeah. but I do, I appreciate all the atmosphere just because those of us Disney buffs understand so many of the details that are put into the park mm -hmm. and, just appreciate all of that um, imagineering. So I do love to people watch and I do love to get my snacks um, and my coffee and just kind of just like sit there in front of Magic Kingdom. And like we all know, Casey's Corner, just sit there on the chairs and take in the music and just relax. I, I do love that. But like not be able to go on Space Mountain. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Crossing the lines there. <laughs> I guess I should make stipulations when there are characters in parades and fireworks because that's my my thing of like I would give up rides for those things but yeah Space Mountain can leave it I'm good 
You can have fun, Carrie. You can have my lightning lane for Space Mountain. I will take it. <laughs> Maybe not because I hate lightning lane already, but you know, that's, that's a different hot take. Oh, that's completely different. I agree. Well, Haley, what is your unpopular opinion? Okay. So I have two as well. Um, and I'm going to give you all my first one. I will not wait in line for mine train for more than 30 minutes because it's not that long. It's a very mm-hmm. short ride. And, you know, my kids would rather ride Big Thunder, honestly, now that they're all tall enough. I think mine train, if it was a little bit longer, it would be better, but you will not catch me waiting in line for longer than 30 minutes ever. So that's my first I feel one. like Big Thunder is a long ride too. Like, it is. Yeah. I think it's long. It yeah. is. And Everest, I know we're, you know, not talking about, or we're talking, that's an Animal Kingdom, but Everest is kind of a long roller coaster too. And I know yeah. you hate the base, Laurel, but space is a long ride. You know, Splash yeah. Mountain, not a roller coaster, but a big ride. It's, you know, it's a long yeah. ride. So I'm not, I don't really want to wait 30 minutes for like a 30 second ride. If, it, if it's even that, I don't know how long it is. And my second one is, I think Cinderella's Royal Table is overrated. I think it's too much money for what you get. Um, When I was a kid, there were a multitude of characters. Peter Pan, Captain Hook, um, the mice from Cinderella, Cinderella, Snow White, um, one of the seven dwarfs. I mean, there was a ton of characters. Like my mom gave me all of our old Disney pictures from when I was a kid. And I was like, oh my gosh, why did they take those characters out? So then they, tra- you know, transitioned to the princesses and that was great, you know, and now because of COVID, we get Cinderella that waves. So I feel like everyone should do it, you know, like it's something you should do, but we have done it several times. And the last time we did it, my, which was in 2019 before COVID, my husband was like, we're not doing it again. We're done. Everybody's gotten to experience it. We're done. So for a family of six, you can imagine what that cost. So I just think for what you get for your money, there should be more. I mean, like I said, looking back when I was a kid at all those characters, I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of characters. I'm like looking through these pictures like, oh my gosh, I forgot like Captain, it's where I met Captain Hook, you know? So I, I think everyone should do it one time, but if you can't do it, I don't think you should be bummed. Okay. Do you, I have a question. So do you think it would be worth it if they did have all of the characters back? Yeah. Like different characters intermingling, you know, yeah. or uh, maybe, you know, like the, the Bon Voyage breakfast. I don't know if you all have done that one. Yes, that was we have. a cute one. Yeah. And I would rather do it or even the princess breakfast at Acheris. Did I say that right? Banquet hall in Epcot. Yes. Epcot. It's more unique. And we actually like the food there better. I don't know. I just think you're paying to sit in the castle. And once you've done it one time, like, why, why keep doing it? Yeah. That's, just, that's just my opinion. Unpopular what, opinion. What do you guys think? Oh, let me go last because I have opinions. Laurel, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> we, I agree. I think I agree with Haley. And I've heard similar things. We've never been to Cinderella's Royal Table. We are hoping. Um, we are actually dining there on Disney's 50th anniversary. So on October 1st, we will be at Cinderella's Royal Table in the castle. So we're just excited to go into the castle. And I think that's the big draw for most people is it's the only way, unless you win a big sweepstakes or are very financially um, capable of paying to stay in the castle, then that's the only way you're going to get in. And so I think for most people, that's the draw. But I have a feeling that I will have a similar opinion to Haley after I eat there. <laughs> and I think you, everyone should do it. Like you said, I mean, yes. everyone should do it. If you can, if you can afford it, I know it's expensive. Um, you know, I do have pictures of all of my children getting like kissed by Snow White when they're babies, you know, like that, that's sweet. Of course they were also free then. So, but anyway, you know, I, I think everyone should do it for sure. And I think the eating there on the 50th is going to be great. And I can't wait to hear about that. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Cinderella's Royal Table, right? Uh, it is such an experience and it's to me a, a once in a lifetime experience, right? Um, you go for the experience. You don't necessarily go for the food or anything else like that. Okay. The princesses, but the purpose we all know is to get inside the castle. Um, stating that they only have about 20 to 25 tables max 
It is so small in there. So no yeah. wonder that the price point is what it is because supply and demand is like absolutely crazy to get a dining reservation there. I will say, and I would love um, for our marketing manager to put this poll on our page. What restaurant do we all believe you get the most bang for your buck? As Haley was saying, I, I just think the portion size Mm-hmm. is so small for the billion dollars that you're spending. Um, you could get that same amount over at Sci-Fi Movie and get plates of food, this big milkshake. Like, I don't know, the price point for, I know it's bougie food and I understand it and I do love it one, you know, once in a while, but for a family of four, a family of six, like it has to be, that's not a lot of food, right. like literally for what you're paying. So I, we all say that you're paying for the experience and definitely try it. But any one that would come to me with a question, I would always suggest be our guest over yeah. um, Cinderella's Royal Table. And there's so much more food with be our guest. Like you pay <laughs> a pretty yeah. price, which I mean, my husband was even like, oh, that ticket. But like, I was like, well, we knew going into it, how much it was going to cost us. And, you know, we've eaten several meals at beer guests. I don't know if you guys remember, but do you remember when breakfast and lunch was quick service at be our guest? Mm-hmm. You yes. quick service. Um, and so that's, you know, we would always back with the dining plan, we would hit it up. I remember one time we were there and they actually invited us to come. They were testing lunch and they invited our family to come test lunch out. Wow. You know, we had to pay for it, but it was just like, hi, would you all like to come? And we we're like, sure. Um, you know, but I agree with you, Kara, you get so much more food mm-hmm. at Be Our Guest. And I don't know, the food is, it's better. Yeah. And, I'll, I'll, tell you, and I'll tell you somewhere that has amazing food and great portion sizes for the same and sometimes cheaper, depending on what you're getting is California Grill. Yeah. And you can get California Grill and you can go, some people don't think it's better, but I, I, don't, I still haven't been there. there. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. No, you're fine. But I know that at California Grill, we've been a few times and we've eaten there for lunch and for dinner and you get a great portion size, sometimes cheaper than we've gotten at Be Our Guest. Mm-hmm. And the food is great. I mean, it's amazing. You can make a meal off of appetizers at Cali Grill. You can. And it, if you're talking about an experience for a better, for a um, more friendly budget, I think California Grill is a good option. You can split a lot of things at California Grill. They're shareable and you still get that terrace view. You can bring your receipt back later and mm-hmm. watch the fireworks from California Grill or you can stand out there and take pictures. And it is really beautiful to see an overview of Magic Kingdom from above from California Grill. So it's an experience too at a, at a better budget and possibly more food for what you're paying for as well. Yeah. Well, you guys know what, um, when it comes back, we will definitely put it on the calendar. Us as a team, we need to do an episode on the pros and cons of the Disney dining plans. Yeah. Uh, that is definitely something that needs to be discussed. And uh, with all of the things that we're just saying, experiences versus food versus portions, um, when the, that comes out and we know the prices are going to inflate like a billion dollars, but <laughs> we will definitely let you listeners and viewers know what the best places are, what we recommend as a team. Yeah, for sure. Great we idea. have one more unpopular opinion that gets, should we save the best for last. Come on, Kara, <laughs> what is your unpopular opinion? Listen, see, I get so into the drama. Like, I forget that I have my own. I really (laughs) forgot there. Um, Okay, we're sticking on this train of having two. So here's my first one. I'm very passionate about this. Dinosaur is underrated. (laughs) It is an underrated ride. It is beautifully themed. Uh, How amazing of it is so different than anything else in the park. You're telling me dinosaurs, how cool is it? Stinking dinosaurs. I'm gonna go catch that dino. Casey, I know you hate that ride. And I will say, I don't know if it's, I've never been in Disneyland, so I don't know if it's better than the copycat version of what's it called over there? Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. Um, I've heard that the actual ride animatronics are the legitimate copycat, just the theming is different. Mm. Dinosaurs, I'm afraid. (laughs) Oh, I cannot disagree more with you, but Laurel, go ahead. I I can't disagree Ah! more. I hate dinosaur. Go ahead, Laurel. I literally have photo pass pictures of me on dinosaur like this. Casey, am I not when I'm on dinosaur? I'm also scared of dinosaur. Why am I scared of all the dark rides? Oh, I grew up watching the land before time and I I, love dinosaur. I love Littlefoot too from the land.
ran before time. But Little that foot. Carnotaurus, that Carnotaurus is scary. No. <laughs> My kids love it. They love dinosaur. We always do it. It gives me whiplash a little bit, you know. Left, right, <laughs> left, right. That's not our dino. Get yeah. out of there. I'm uh, just mad about it. I'm mad about it. But your kids love it, Haley? They love it. Yeah, they love it. Uh, the photo pass pictures are hilarious, though, because, you know, sometimes they're like this. And <laughs> um, Here, yeah. if you're watching on the YouTube, right about now, I am going to snap up a picture of me and Brandon on the dinosaur ride. Um, just absolutely <laughs> amazing. And I know he'll love his face shared with the world. But what a great picture opportunity when that dinosaur is coming at you. So if you haven't gotten Memory Maker or saw those pictures of yourself on the ride, definitely uh, check that out. It's great. What's your second hot take or your unpopular opinion? You know what? I had a different one on the script, but I'm changing it <laughs> because this one I'm a little bit more... Um, ready to not fight fighting's bad in the disney world uh, i'm ready to discuss Defend. and that is that epcot is not shown the respect that it deserves not even the fact that it's underrated i will say that epcot is um seen as oh people don't like it because it's just world showcase but I think that a lot of people don't like Epcot because of that. It doesn't have a lot of the rides and it's more of the go and eat and drink around the world type of park. But at the same time, now that it's getting Remy's Ratatouille, all of a sudden you see everyone at Epcot. So yeah. I don't want to hear that. Um, also, I think it's the park that gives us the most learning opportunity. As we know, Disney was all about self-discovery and education and he was turning tr literally, literally trying to learn about like different cultures and how animals moved and how people worked and he wanted to bring these cultures to an opportunity for people to see like I don't know when I'm ever going to get to Europe or Africa or these other countries that are around world showcase so he literally brought that to us and I just think that's an amazing way to grow up and travel and eat and it's super cool my husband and I love Epcot Kara like <laughs> it is our favorite park I mean I know it, it, there's everybody loves Magic Kingdom I love Magic Kingdom yeah. like Epcot is so leisure I feel like we leisurely do Epcot our kids do get bored quick but you know we do the scavenger hunts and things like that but I'm with you like I think it doesn't get enough love it is more than just eating and drinking you know there's so many cool places to explore and I mean I like I said I feel like Epcot is not rush 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 go 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 I mean I guess it can be Mm -hmm. frozen test track and you know things like that but I think it's just chill it's the chill part in my opinion that's fair that's fair Laurel what do you think I I actually agree with Kara I think that Epcot doesn't get enough respect for all the things it offers because people just go to frozen or test track and then they eat and drink and then they leave mm -hmm. um and Epcot has one of my favorite things about Disney which is the aquarium at the sea with Nemo and friends. I love that there's a full on aquarium at Disney and that you can go and watch dolphins and manatees and all different kinds of sharks. But I also love the ocean, but I just think it's really cool that you can experience all the things about the land and the oceans and different cultures around the world. Um, plus all the things that Walt kind of dreamed for in Epcot as the city of tomorrow, right? That's the whole point of it originally. And it got changed after um, Roy Disney took over for, for him and creating that park. But there's so much to discover there. It's a park of discovery for me. And so I think that people should give it more of a chance. I agree. Wah, wah, wah. I, um, <laughs> it's educational. It's educational. I will say that for sure. Um, yeah. And I'm sorry, Laurel, but the, the, aquarium I walk straight out when I'm done with Nemo and friends sorry I walk straight out Ugh. guys but oh I'm sorry go, go ahead. ahead Casey oh no you're good Kara what were you gonna say no, I was just going to say, this is, you know, the whole part of coming together as Disney friends, like yeah. no park is perfect. No person is perfect. No merchandise or any ride. Um, but we all love different things. And that's why we all come together in this community. So, and let's be honest, none of us would be friends if it wasn't for our love of Disney and Instagram, but you know, it's true. It's true. And I think we're all entitled to our own opinions, just like our listeners 
are entitled to your own opinions. I want to know what you guys think about our unpopular opinions. If you crazy disagree with us, I want to know about it. So please, um, you know, we will make sure to get all this stuff up on our social media. So you, we can obviously engage with you guys and you can let us know what you think. Um, but for sure, guys, we're going to pause really quick for an ad break, but we will be right back. Do not go anywhere because we have another really fun game that you guys are going to enjoy. But we'll be right back. What is up, Why We Disney family? We are back with another special episode and another special game. Um, I will have to give a shout out here to Casey at Casey's Corner, my lovely co-host. She came up with this and it's called Who Said It? Um, Casey and I are going to be asking or saying quotes of Disney characters and Laurel and Haley will have to tell us who they think these characters are. Of course, we're going to have all of this up on our Instagram. So if you have not answered these yet, go ahead and pause this episode, go over to our Instagram, answer them yourself, and then come back and watch all of our reactions. Okay. (laughs) So we are going to start with a super easy one, Haley and Laurel. I'll, I'll let you guys ding in when you know it. Ready? All our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. Laurel. (laughs) Walt Disney, Haley. I'm just saying, I don't do good on the spot. I'm like, panic, abort mission, abort mission. Oh, no. (laughs) That one is, of course, Walt Disney himself. Um, What a great great what a great quote there we go if I can speak today um so yeah starting off with a little easy but Haley I hear that you're up first oh gosh (laughs) I feel like right now I feel like in a bug's life when the queen or you know whatever her name is says they come to eat they leave they come to eat they leave (laughs) no you got it All right. And I can even give you a hint if you need help. The first one is I'm surrounded by idiots. I know what this is. Why can't I think of it? Because I feel like I'm an idiot right now. (laughs) No, Um, no. I don't remember. I'm sorry. I tell you, I'm don't do good on the spot. Is it Queen of Hearts or Scar? Scar. Yes. Give me some choices. I'm, I'm a multiple choice person, you know. Me too. I'm multiple choice. I I can't throw things off the top of my head. Yeah. Very good. That one was Scar. Here's the next one. We'll see if you need choices on this though. I'm a damsel. I'm in distress. I can handle this. Have a nice day. Is that Meg? Yes, it is. Good job. Um, Next. This is a perfect time to panic. Um, is that Marlon? No, oh, good answer. Though. Although it makes perfect sense. But though. <laughs> good answer. I get some choices. Can I phone a friend? <laughs> <laughs> you can phone a friend. Can you phone Laurel? Phone Laurel. Laurel. <laughs> phone Laurel. 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 <laughs> yes, Haley. Okay, I feel now is a perfect time to panic. Is that what you said? This is a perfect time to panic. I feel this like is a perfect time to panic. I feel like it's the reporter from Monsters Inc., but maybe it's not. Is it from Monsters Inc.? Because that was gonna be my second. No. Is okay. it Rex or Woody? Rex, right? Or no, it is Woody. It is Woody. It is Woody. Talking to Buzz, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, it's Rex. I'm trying to think when this part was, though. Is this where they were underneath the Pizza Planet truck? And he's like, this is the perfect time to panic. Or was this when they were in Sid's room and they were talking about panicking? Does anyone know? Do y'all recall? It's got to be under the pizza truck. Because in Sid's room, Buzz is all sad. He's not panicking about anything. Giving up on life. Yes. Very true. Haley, your last one is... Thank I'm God. not a prize to be won. Um, I feel like that's Jasmine. Yes, you're correct, Princess oh. Jasmine. Hey, this is pretty good. I'm just sweating. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> good job, Haley. 
Oh, good job, Haley. I'm so proud of you. And this is like Laurel's game. Like when I created these, like I really should have made these harder. Okay, Laurel, you ready? <laughs> no, don't talk me up. I'm nervous now. <laughs> okay, well, you can phone a friend, but you can only phone Haley because Karen, I know oh, you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. Okay. I <laughs> love this movie. Okay. Don't tell me we're about to go over a huge waterfall. Sharp pointy rocks at the bottom. Yep. yep. Bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> who said it? <laughs> I'm pretty sure Cusco is the one who says it and Pacha's looking over the waterfall. Yes, you're right. Okay. I thought he, I didn't think Cusco said it, um, but I had to Google it and actually it was Cusco. So very good. Very good. On point. <laughs> All right. Our next one is giving up is for rookies. Where's that from? Who said oh, that? I feel like I need more than just that quote. Giving up is for rookies. Giving up is for rookies. Oh, I wish I knew what scene this was in because it sounds very familiar. Can I get a hint? Um, it's a multiple choice. If I tell you. If she gives me multiple choice, that might be too easy. Oh, okay, I can give you multiple choice. Giving up is for rookies. Is it from Mulan, Hercules, or Brave? I'm going to go with Mulan. Is it Musha? No. What is it? I really don't know. So this is Phil from Hercules. Oh my Giving gosh. Up. Yes. Giving up is for rookies. Dang. Dang it. That's so a hard. fun one. Okay. When you that's said right. giving up, when you said giving up, all for whatever reason I could see was Mushu in the porridge. And I know those things don't go together. <laughs> A lot of the quotes like literally could be said by multiple people. So, okay. I okay. think these next one, you'll, these next two, you'll get pretty easy. So Laurel, your next one is, my God, you've gotten fat. <laughs> Edna Mode. Edna Mode. Oh, she Edna. is my girl. One of my favorite character meet and greets is Edna Mode. Do y'all not think so? Oh, I liked meeting her too. She's I've fun. never met her. <sighs> She's a little intimidating. Like, I feel like she's going to criticize my outfit a little bit. I can she's very me. bossy, too. Like, you stand here. Okay, you stand here. Okay. Like, very bossy. Love her. Right. Edna, my God, you've gotten fat. <laughs> okay, next one, and this is your last one, Laurel, is I don't believe that man has ever been to medical school. Why did I just blank out? It's about, okay, doctor. Oh my I don't God. believe that man's ever been to medical school. Why am I blanking out? Oh my goodness. I'm shocked. I literally know what it is and I was going to say it and my brain went blank. That's you know word. what movie it's from? I could not, I could have told you 20 seconds ago. I wouldn't have gotten this. I can't now. I can't tell you now. Uh, Laurel. Yeah, it's gone. Kara, can you give Laurel multiple choice? <laughs> um, I don't know because I don't know how it could tie into other movies. I will yeah. say I don't know if I would have gotten this um, because it's from a very specific scene. Yeah. I can see it in my brain happening, but I could not tell you who it is. I guess I, okay. So here are your options. Buzz, Jesse, or Woody. It's Buzz. He's talking about Sid in the movie. Sid. Yes. Like, yes. Because Sid's like tearing up all these toys yes. and like putting them back together. <laughs> yes. Okay. I was really I scared. In my mind, I kept confusing it with Captain America when he says there's only one God, ma'am, and he doesn't dress like that. Is what oh. I kept confusing it with. Like, he's not a doctor. And so I don't know why those were crossed. <laughs> Oh, we should do this another time, Marvel edition, because I think that I would get a lot of those. That would have been a great quote, Captain Mary. That would be fun. That would be fun. Thank you all for helping me. Man, this is stressful when they put you on the spot. Under pressure, yeah, for sure. For sure, pressure. Guys, listen, thank you, Haley and Laurel, so much for coming on with us today. I hope you guys had fun. Did you have fun? It's good to see y'all's faces. Yes, yes. It's always I fun. I had a ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank y'all for playing our silly games. And I'm so glad that, you know, everyone knows now that a lot of moving parts go on with this podcast and we could not do it without 
the two of you. So thank you for all that you do. All of our listeners, I want you to thank Haley and Laurel for all that they do. We could not do it without them. Literally, we couldn't. But guys, make sure that you follow us on Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. Put in your email so you can receive our newsletter every month. Really exciting information that goes out every single month. Um, But we love you guys so much. We hope that you enjoyed today's episode. And we will see you next Wednesday. Hope you have a great week.